Hi, today's topic is talking about teams. And one of the things you'll hear about sales, and this comes up a lot around sales conferences and sales meetings, is there is no I in teams. One of the best responses I heard to that, no, but there are two I's in commission. That's not what we're here to talk about today. We're not here to talk about comp. We're here to talk about teams. Again, a popular topic, uh, particularly in sales and particularly around sales meetings. And I think that people have sort of this warm, fuzzy feeling about teams, and yet uh, I think that there is a lot more to it than most people realize. So we want to talk about the evolution of teams, the stages of team growth, and the work to be done at each of those stages. Okay, so the first stage is a very simple one. Are you on or off the team? And, you know, in sales, you've got people who are highly engaged and, you know, super motivated. And it's like, yeah, I'm on, I'm on the team. I'm on. It's like you're on the payroll, but are you on the team? And to answer that question, you need to be clear on what the goals and objectives of the team are. And underlying that, really behind that, is the leadership vision for why this team was even created and what its purpose is. So the vision thing and the goals and objectives of the team and your alignment to those are really the test of are you on the team? So let's say that you are. Great. Okay. Step number two in team evolution or in team growth um, is acquaintance. Do you know everybody else on the team? And oftentimes you don't. Or, or I've seen, you know, when we've gotten like major account teams together or global account teams, one of the first things that happens when you get them all in the same place is they start introducing themselves to one another because they've never actually met in person. Well, in team growth, acquaintance, you know, getting everybody introduced is part of it, but the work that goes along with that is defining the methods and processes of the team. So, yeah, we're all on the team. We're on the company team, and so let's, let's get ready to play. And everybody shows up, and one person's in a football jersey, and one person's in a baseball uniform, and somebody's got their company bicycling outfit on, and somebody else may have a little Speedo suit with a company logo, and different folks all on the team, or thought they were, but they're all showing up to play a different game. So what game are we playing? And that's defined by the methods and processes that have been agreed upon and obviously sales process and aligning your sales process with a customer's buying journey. You know, that's all part of the work that's being done today. Okay, great. So now we have everybody's on the team and we've introduced everybody. So uh, we're going to play baseball. That's, our, that's the method. That's the game we're playing. Great. So step number three is jockeying. Now that everyone's been acquainted, Folks start figuring out, okay, there are five of us at this level. There's only one at that level, which means I have to beat out four of these people. One way of thinking about it. Uh, these guys, I think I can probably outpace them, but this one over here, she looks like a comer, so you know, probably need to up my game a little bit. All of that sort of internal talk and informal pecking order that gets established is all part of jockeying. And the way you work through that is by having clear roles and responsibilities, okay? So we're all going to play baseball. Let's take the field. Uh, hold it. Okay, are you going to play for it? You first, you second. Okay, now we all know each other's role and responsibility, okay? So now we've gotten through the first three stages of team growth. The fourth stage is coalescence. And what happens there is the team is actually, you'll hear managers say, the team is starting to gel. They're starting to come together. They're starting to play together. Instead of having a collection of all-stars, they're starting to play as a unit, which is why all-star games often aren't that much fun to watch because you have a bunch of individual star performers, but they don't function that well in team play. Okay, So when you have coalescence, when the team is beginning to gel, what you do in terms of the work there is resolve and address basic issues. So um, uh, somebody didn't fulfill their role or somebody fell down, dropped the, the ball or dropped this customer assignment or whatever. 
fundamental basic issue. Here's a basic issue. I don't trust that person to do their job and so on. And what happens, you'll see, when that comes up is not that somebody wasn't doing their job, but they're also trying to backfill or do somebody else's job, their role and responsibility, because they didn't trust them to do it, say, in this account or this situation. And finally, when you get through all of that, the fifth stage of team growth is synergy, you know, where one plus one equals three or five or whatever. You know, it's sort of, it's ever expanding. And what goes on then is simply valuing the relationships themselves. And if you've seen championship teams, you know, Super Bowl, World Series, World Cup, whatever, and, you know, everybody's drowning in champagne afterwards, and I love you, man, and everybody's having a great time, they really do love one another. They really have one together. And um, you'll often see that they sometimes will go into business together. You know, when the playing days are over, maybe they open a restaurant together or they have some other endeavor, car dealership, whatever, because they really do value the relationships and hanging out together. The part of the problem, in my view, is that people hear the word team, think about teams, and sort of hearken back to a team that they were on sometime earlier in their experience that really did experience synergy, that experienced flow, trust, relationships, and all of that. And the problem now is when they're establishing or becoming part of a new team is often I see them swimming upstream. They start with, you seem like our kind of guy. I think you'd fit in here. You've got, you know, sort of the same values and attitudes. And you're starting with valuing the relationship and swimming upstream and often people come on board and a few weeks into it you find people sitting around in meetings and everybody's you know meeting 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 and somebody will finally ask can somebody tell me what the basic issue is here can, can you tell me what we're meeting about what the argument or the misunderstanding is about and then you'll address the basic issue and often the issue is that this foundational work has not been done and so the way you address that, okay, we're up against something here. Number one, is it part of our goals and objectives, what we're even trying to accomplish or address here? Yeah, it is. Great. Did, were we following our process? And, and are, there's a hole in our process? Or were we not following our process? Maybe that's the issue. No, the process is cool and, and we were following. Well, then did everybody stay in role? And did they measure up to and fulfill their responsibilities. And by the time you've gotten through that, you've probably answered the, and addressed the basic issue. But if those aren't in place, then you fundamentally have not done the foundational work. And I see that missing a lot. Uh, I see lots of groups of people. I don't necessarily see lots of strong functioning teams, synergistic teams. So think about it. If you have any questions, please uh, click on the link, send us a, an email, and love to talk to you about it. Thanks for watching.